all right um welcome back everyone so in this part of the in this part of the video we're just going to perform the integration and solve for our uh, constants of integration using the two boundary conditions yep so let's take our ordinary differential equation okay zero is equal to the second derivative of the velocity in x all right so first integration okay this this should be this should be an easy one c1 never mind i'll switch to that different pen c1 has to equal c1's got to equal the, the first derivative okay upon this is upon um doing your first integration and then again like once you perform your second integration you'll get the velocity in x as a function of y the velocity in x as a function of y is going to be equal to there we go c1 c1 times y plus c2 so let me just rewrite this so let's just uh, rewrite this i'm going to have my dependent variable on the right side and yo know, i'm just going to stick around with the color scheme yeah all right looks good looks good looks good and c1 and c2 are the unknowns that i need to solve for once again i am playing around with these different pens c1 plus c2 Alrighty. so which boundary condition should we use first all right let's uh let's let's start off with bc1 boundary condition one boundary condition one says that at y equals zero all right your velocity is equal to u isn't that correct yep that's correct the no slip boundary condition so upon substituting that you get all right mm, okay we're still playing around with colors never mind c1 multiplied by zero plus c2 is equal to u uppercase u all right so there we go we have we have c2 equal to u we have solved for one of our constants of integration give yourself a pat on the back this is progress and then again now we're going to use bc2 but but before that let's just uh, rewrite our expression shall we velocity in x as a function of y there we go and that's going to equal c1 times y because we just got rid of c2 because oops never mind c2 is equal to u okay c2 is equal to u all right very good very good and now we're going to use bc2 and boundary condition 2 says <clears throat> sorry boundary condition 2 says that at y equal to delta delta being the thickness of the film the thickness of the fluid layer at y equals delta my velocity was equal to zero because the bottom plate was stationary all right the bottom plate was stationary no slip condition so with that with that in mind we get zero equal to c1 times delta all right let's uh, c1 times delta plus u as you guys can see i'm trying to keep the variety in colors because variety is the spice of life ain't that correct so c1 comes out to be negative u divided by delta negative u divided by delta all right all right so with that we have our we have we already evaluated c c2 and now we have evaluated c1 as well so both of our constants of integration have been evaluated for very very nice so your velocity profile the velocity in the x direction as a function of y is going to have a linear is going to have a nice linear profile so u is going to be the maximum velocity u is going to be the maximum velocity and as you keep going down as you keep increasing the y direction your velocity is going to keep decreasing until you hit the bottom plate okay and that makes intuitive sense okay 
So if I were to redraw everything, my top plate, my top plate is at y equals zero, and my bottom plate is at y equals delta. Okay, this thickness right here is delta, and I have my fluid. For the top, the top plate is moving with velocity u. Okay. So your velocity profile is going to be linear. You're going to have a straight line velocity profile. So at y equals 0, you're going to have the maximum value u. And at y equals delta, your velocity is going to be equal to 0. And why is that the case? Because the bottom plate is stationary. No slip boundary condition. So now uh, we're here. All right. All right. What else? So once you have this uh, velocity profile, you can find out the force required to move this plate. Okay, and that's gonna be, and for that we're gonna be using Newton's law of viscosity. All right, Newton's law of viscosity is gonna be used for that. Okay, and since we have a unidirectional flow, we only have flow in one dimension. Our shear stress all right let's uh shear stress shear stress in the y direction due to flow in the x direction is going to be equal to negative viscosity times the gradient of velocity in x with respect to y okay so once we if we want to find out the viscosity okay Usually, um, in different vis viscometers, cuvette flow is a uh, good cuvette flow is an application in fluid mechanics problems where you're trying to figure out the viscosity of a Newtonian fluid. All right. So, with some all right, in this case, in the case of cuvette flow, this is just going to become force over area is equal to negative mu the viscosity times okay our gradient our derivative term all right and in that case that's just going to be equal to negative u divided by delta all right just some basic calculus all right and some of you might be wondering okay what's what area that's going to be the area of the plate that is in contact with the fluid the area of the plate that is in contact with the fluid and that area is equal to the length times the width of the plate, okay? So the area that is in contact with the fluid, area in contact with the fluid, very good. Okay, so area we know, force we can measure, okay? We can measure force. Force can be measured, all you need is a, you have to like attach a, one of those, um, I believe it's called a spring, like one, like those new the uh, uh, my physics, my college physics memory is a little foggy right now. So one of those um, balances that those spring balances that you used in your physics classes, you can you can just like put it there, all right, and that's gonna give you a force reading. Well, area, you know, some basic geometry, you can calculate that. Delta, that's also given. You, well, you fix that. You can con that's that's something you could control, and hence you can calculate mu. So let's just uh, write it here. The viscosity of a fluid can be calculated using the uh, cuvette flow application. So if I do my algebra correctly, force divided by force divided by length times w. That's the area, and all of that divided by the velocity gradient. Of course, there's going to be a negative sign here. Don't forget the negative sign. And all of that is going to be divided by the velocity gradient. Negative u over delta. Okay, okay. So yeah, um, that's pretty much all I have for you guys in cuvette flow. And if you want to make this problem even more interesting, okay? If you want to make this problem even more interesting, try, try solving, all right? Come back here, okay? But instead of having a stationary bottom plate, 
Let's see if you can move both of the plates at different velocities. See how that's going to affect your velocity profile. And I'm going to give you a hint. It's still going to be linear. Again, why is that? I'm going to leave that question up to you. Or, or if you want to make it even more complicated, here you had the both plates were horizontal. What if both plates were vertical? Okay, what if both plates were vertical so that gravity is now pulling the fluid down as one so as one of the plates starts moving gravity is also pulling the fluid down okay so those are just different um, variations of the cuvette flow problem and another variation i believe is where you can actually have a pressure gradient in this one that we had no pressure gradient so just to summarize um just to summarize further complications that can be added to this problem you can have vertical setup and in the vertical setup, you'll have a gra gravity is going to be relevant. Okay. That's going to be one. And another one is going to be hmm, both plates are moving. Both plates are moving. Okay. And that's going to give you different boundary conditions. And the last one is going to be applied pressure gradient. So that's also going to affect your uh, velocity profile. All right, so yeah, guys, that's uh, pretty much all I have on Kuwait flow for you guys in Cartesian coordinates. And uh, yep, we're, we're actually going to come back to this problem in a future video where we actually look at a similar problem, but in cylindrical coordinates. And that's going to be, and but I promise you guys, it's going to be just as simple. So yeah, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for sticking till the end. Bye-bye.